You were all very active in the comments below the recent video about animals that went extinct. To the question, what animal would you like to resurrect, a lot of subscribers chose the dodo bird. And it makes sense, as dodos are one of the most popular birds in cartoons. Dutch sailors used to call this bird the duodu, which translates as idiot. The dodo became a symbol of stupidity due to its inability to fly, its clumsy running, and its complete lack of instincts, which eventually led to its hasty and almost easy extinction. For sailors, it was great, because they could quickly kill them for food. But new research has disproved this hardened belief about the simple-mindedness of these birds. Having compared the body size to the brains of these extinct birds, scientists concluded that the dodos were rather clever birds. If scientists collect enough DNA to make a clone, they'll be able to implant it in the eggs of the closely related present-day pigeon. It might make a new, interesting character. But if in the contemporary world people put their ideas regarding bizarre animals into cartoons, in the past, remarkable creatures became mythologized, only these stories weren't funny at all. Okay, mostly not funny. Now, you'll discover which monster legends are still a taboo subject in the Congo. What animal can capture you using hypnosis? And which extinct animals provided the basis for our creepiest myths? So, what did the strangest extinct animals look like? Show the Cro-Magnon a pug, and it'll be taken for a monster. In the same vein, most extinct animals often seem pretty strange to us. For example, the Platybelodon, a genus of extinct proboscideans living 15 million years ago. And it's terribly funny-looking. Although the beast had four terrifying tusks, it just doesn't look sinister at all because it had no trunk. Instead, the beast had a peculiar shovel-like lower jaw, and its whole mouth and lips were elongated. Present-day elephants would certainly laugh at this poor fellow. There's another creature that looks a bit like Platybelodon, and it's called Dinotherium, and it survived until the early Pleistocene. This guy was lucky enough to have a trunk, but its tusks pointed backwards. Scientists are still arguing about how it could possibly use them, because this is kind of what it would look like if you were defending yourself with a knife and threatening your opponent with the handle. We all remember Jim Carrey playing the guy who always said yes. This guy must be the one who always says no. I mean, the slightest nod, and it would injure itself. That's a whole new level of self-deprecation. But there are some other rather peculiar extinct creatures that humans actually got to see with their own eyes. Roy Mackle, a University of Chicago biologist in the 1980s, decided to lead an expedition to the Likuala Swamps to search for the mysterious water monster that was described in the myths and legends of the Republic of the Congo. But the nearby tribesmen refused to assist him in any way. It turned out it was a taboo subject in that area. That's how much people were afraid of this particular creature. One woman finally shared her ancestors' tales and told the researchers a story of an animal with boards in its back. When she was a kid, her parents warned her about a strange beast and advised her to hide behind trees if she saw it in the woods. She also added that once she actually noticed the creature's back peeking out of some water. But what is this fantastic beast? Thumbing through a book with dinosaur illustrations, this woman, who had been scared of the monster since childhood, abruptly set her eyes on a picture of a stegosaurus. It was also very reminiscent of Spinosaurus. But all the dinosaurs have gone extinct, haven't they? From the description, it was probably Naguma Monene. Naguma Monene is a giant lizard that lived in Central Africa. It had a forked tongue, short legs, and a serrated frill along its spine. 
That's why this giant, 15-meter-long lizard resembles prehistoric animals. It moves quickly through the swamps and eats birds and monkeys. And that means it could easily make, for example, a child lost in the jungle into a menu item. And that's not the strangest animal that could really pose a threat to humans. Our ancestors, thank God, didn't happen to see the following creatures with their own eyes. But if they had encountered them, there would be no chance of survival. For example, Therizinosaurs. This guy's listed twice in the Guinness Book of Records. First, for having three claws on each of its paws, with each of the claws being over a meter long. Therizinosaurs could easily kill a person with their embrace. Second, the relatively tiny skull of this 12-meter tall monster was desperately trying to fit with its long neck, but looked quite disproportionate when combined with its large body. And it looked pretty strange already. It turns out it's possible to be so strange that it would be considered a record. It might just be that this guy is the prototype for our well-known friend, Freddy Krueger. The next beast didn't become a myth, but somehow people associate it with Lucifer. And it's a frog. No, not like that. But the giant devil frog, also known as the Beelzebufo Ampinia. It's gigantic because it's the size of a pit bull and weighs as much as an alibi dog. It's the largest frog that ever existed. But why do they call it devilish? Because its jaws are capable of producing pressure, the equivalent of 2,200 newtons, which is close to the jaw-closing force of mammalian predators. That's why this frog could have easily had dinosaurs for dinner. But could it have the power of hypnosis like the hypnotoad from Futurama. In Australian Aboriginal folklore, there's a legend about a strange and dangerous amphibian that turns people into slaves after hypnotizing them. Meet Bunyip. They say it hid in the depths of swamps and small rivers. Legend says that the creature was even capable of changing the water level. This mysterious beast hunted people especially women and children. Bunyip killed its victims by hugging them to death with its sharp claws. But as it turned out, this mythological creature could be the extinct Australian marsupial called Thylacoleo, also known as the marsupial lion. It had the most powerful bite amongst all mammalian species. It might even have climbed trees to dispose of the bodies of its victims. Many bones with strange cuts that fit the jaws of a thylacoleo were excavated in its habitat, Lansfield. It turned out the bones belonged to about a few hundred thousand different people. But what could be even scarier than hypnosis? <laughs> Fangs and claws. How about tentacles and pincers? And so we come to myths of extinct arthropods. There's a mysterious story of how three men were trying to catch a swordfish when suddenly a giant big-eyed sea monster appeared just in front of them and started attacking the boat. A desperate fight broke out. The monster was round-shaped and emitted a dark liquid with a poisonous smell. The three terrified men hightailed it out of there, luckily making their escape. The next morning, the trio lay in their beds, pale, trembling, and refused to eat. These reminiscences were found in the journal of John Batchelor, a 19th century missionary. And no, it was not the Kraken known to us, but another mythological character the Akoro Kamui. This monster was a huge octopus from Ainu folklore. The Ainu are the indigenous peoples of the Japanese islands. They say its size reached 120 meters. The Ainu believed that Akoro Kamui could heal and transfer knowledge, but it was also unstable and prone to cause harm. It had the ability to self-amputate and regenerate its limbs. People who believe in this creature and its power believe that giving offerings to Akoro Kamui will cure body ailments. In particular, 
deformities, and broken limbs. Quite possibly, a Korokamui could be a squid that lived during the Cretaceous period, the Habrotuthis we know so little about. But it was about the size of a colossal squid that could reach 15 meters in length. No less mysterious looking is Pulmonoscorpius. It's a genus of Eurypterid that lived in the territory of what is now contemporary Germany and the United States during the Paleozoic era. It was the largest known arthropod that ever existed. Its length was up to 70 centimeters, while the present-day scorpion is a maximum of just 18 centimeters. Pulmonoscorpius had enlarged pincers and forelimbs. If you get stung by a normal scorpion, you'll instantly receive a dose of potent neurotoxins that will have a deleterious effect on your central nervous and cardiovascular systems. And sometimes such stings have a fatal outcome. Now, imagine what would happen to you if you were stung by a scorpion four times that size. The next creature probably still exists. And so we come to myths of creatures that might not have gone extinct. Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus is a genus of great ape that lived in the late Miocene, Pliocene, and Pleistocene on the territory of what is now present-day India, China, and Vietnam. They were over three meters tall and weighed approximately 500 kilograms. The large size of these primates gave them a great advantage over other species. Gigantopithecus rarely fell prey to predators and could cover a large area in search of food. Their extinction was caused by the Ice Age. Giant apes started running out of food they were used to eating, mainly fruit, and their bodies couldn't adapt to a new diet. Do you recognize this character? Legends of many civilizations speak of strange people or apes covered head to toe in fur. Bigfoot's image is based on apparent eyewitness testimony, large footprints in snow, and samples of fur. But the most likely explanation for Bigfoot, and the Yeti, if they exist, is that they are the direct descendants of Gigantopithecus. This intelligent animal, which prefers to be alone, would likely retreat into the deep woods or mountains if human civilization invaded its territory. And if it were clever enough, it might be able to hide from people for hundreds or even thousands of years. And finally, we come to future legends about strange animals. As you can see, often when people face something difficult to understand, they come up with a legend for it. I want you to imagine you're an early human who's not yet familiar with present-day animals. You don't know anything about their origins or what to expect from them. So, your challenge. Write a short myth or legend about any modern-day animal in the comments. For example, what about a monster that didn't come into existence until the 16th century? Yeah, I'm talking about the pug. <laughs>